I've been talking about this for a few weeks. And the reports from around the league, if you, there is no market for Brandon Ingram because nobody, including his current team, the New Orleans Pelicans, wants to pay his four year, $200 million extension that he's eligible for. Mm -hmm. Now, Ingram on surface, is he a good player? Yes. He's not a great player, he's a good player. He's a puzzling player. First of all, he never plays. I mean, if you pull up Brandon Ingram right now and just blurt out random numbers about how many games he plays, the idea of him coming to the Pistons is troubling on a number of fronts because, A, I don't want to pay that extension. I cannot – if the two best players on your team are Brandon Ingram and Cade Cunningham, the best you'll ever see is the play-in. And So he's playing like 50 games a year? Between – Last couple of years? Between 48 and 55. Pull it up. The point I'm making is – I'm not it's not an ad hominem attack on Brandon Ingram. He's not a bad player. He's not a great player. So if the Pistons are going to acquire him, um, you're going to be dealing assets like uh, Jaden Ivey, like uh, Jalen Durant. Um, certainly you're not dealing a Sir Thompson, you're not dealing Ron Holland. you are you are acquiring wings. The, the problem I would have in this guys is the following. and I know the first thing people are going to say, But losing hasn't netted us the top pick anyways. Fair. Noted. What I don't want to do is get on the treadmill of mediocrity. So signing Tobias Harris, that takes Brandon Ingram out for me. Because if I add Brandon Ingram, if my starting five turns into, let's say it's Cade, it's Beasley, it's Ingram, it's Tobias, and I I, I don't know, say it's Duran, say it's not, who cares? The point is, let's say you win 30 games. All right, well, A, you're not going to be one of the worst four teams in the league. So your your lottery odds will be greatly reduced. And you're not going to be good enough to get in the playoffs. You will exist in the space between. And if you pay Ingram, a player whose current team does not want to pay him, you will be stuck with a contract that I don't want to be dramatic and say it's unmovable but I don't think people are going to line up for it. No. If people won't line up to pay this guy now, w- what happens when he comes here? And what are his games played? Do you have there that? There you go. Yep, I do. Last year, 64 games. He started games uh, the year before that, 45. The year before that, 55. The year before that, 61, 62, 52, 59, and Okay, 40. so you're going to put that guy. Yeah. With another guy in Cade Cunningham who can't stay healthy. I Guys, look, I won't firebomb it if they do it, but I'm warning you, not what I would do. Trajan Langdon told you, I will take on big contracts with assets attached. He has not done that. And what I don't want to do here, I mean, Rico, you're your own man. Do whatever the hell you like. You want Brandon Ingram, that's fine. He ain't coming here with first-round picks attached. No. And then you're on the hook to pay him. The, I, factually speaking, the Hawks have passed on Brandon Ingram. Yeah. No, Several I, I, teams have passed on him here. See, I told you, for me, I, I'm waiting to see what happens with Trajan Langdon when it comes to the trade deadline because you still have the money. And could you be that third team when somebody's desperate and I need that one-star player where somebody may say, I want Brandon Ingram, I want this person. And now you become the dumping ground for picks and all the other things just to make the contracts level out. Yes, I would like to see it happen right now. I'm not trying to be a, a Trajan Langdon bot, but yes, when, <laughs> when, when you get the job 72 hours for the draft, I got to give you a little bit of leeway. It's not like he had the entire offseason. He just got here and officially got the job minutes before the draft started. Here's the other angle. Um if Langdon views beef stew like I do, useless, um, that money needs to come off your books. That lessens the blow a little bit. It creates the money needed. He's making, I believe, $36 million on the last year of his deal right now. Um, you can do this deal. But I just, my question, it's a lot like. Million? Wow. It's a lot like the Cade thing. Why? What's the why behind it? Now, if you tell me, Mike, we've lost long enough, we got to try to win, Fine. But the NBA is not MLB. It's not the NHL, and it's not the NFL. I say that because it's it's like the poker tournament thing of a chip and a chair. If you get into a poker tournament and you have a seat, you have a chance to go the whole way. Mm -hmm. 
if things break right. We look at Arizona and Texas in baseball. They get in, they get hot, they win. We go to football. You see a wild card. Get in, get hot, win it. Giants. Hockey happens all the time. Basketball has no evidence of that. It doesn't work that way. So I, I get scared if... You Len- don't get the eighth seed winning it all. Right. Oh, you won the play-in and then you win the whole thing. No. Cutsy. You're in the trunk <laughs> of Joe Pesci's yeah. car. So I, I would be concerned. Now, if you want a positive, okay. Wing, bit of a spacer. His shooting is wildly inconsistent. But New Orleans, familiarity, Fred Vinson, connection. Maybe we can put him back together. I get nervous. If they could bring him here and somehow not have to pay a massive extension, it's a different conversation. But, Rico, the, the Pelicans don't want to be in the Brandon Ingram business. What does that no. tell you? Yeah, the only time he played 70 – he was in 79 games was his rookie season. You know what's fun? It's not fun. It's maddening. Look at his three-point percentage by year. Tell me what you see here, David. Ready? <laughs> 29 rookie year, 39, 33, 39, 38, 32, 39, 35. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Which means that this year, <laughs> he do for it up. 39% up. this year. It's up. Yeah. Oh, All right, David, a couple of ticket texts. We'll touch the table with football. We'll keep an eye on what's going on at Comerica. I believe the tarp is on the field. David, what do you got? Ingram is the Kawhi Leonard model. Forget that. Don't want him here in Detroit. Ingram literally plays 55 games a year. LOL. Why would anyone want him? Okay, but. Well, no one does, factually. But but here's the thing. This is where you don't really get to be that arrogant as a Pistons fan. You won 14 games. So you don't get to sit here and tell me, no, I don't want this blanket. I'm homeless because it has polka dots on it. I can, in fact, say that. I don't want Zach Levine. The only reason I you would won 14 want, the games. only way I would want him is if you give me picks. How are you I don't arrogant? Want Zach How are you Levine? arrogant? And you it's not won. arrogance. It is. Uh, this no, player. I don't want not the player because the player us. isn't good. Zach Levine isn't Your good. Your team's not my, good. My goal. Why Mike says you would be in the play-in constantly if you get a player like this. My goal is to make the play-in right now. Maybe not with Brandon Ingram, but to make it. Making it, you won't have that with Zach Levine. He's not good. Okay, he, David. He's not. But it's one when you look at your roster, you have a whole bunch of not good. Look, I just think you can you can say I don't want the player because he doesn't come with assets. I don't think that that's being snobby. No, no, I, with that, that's different. But yeah. just that's say, what I just said. No, you're making he's no good. I said I don't want him only if he comes with picks. I want him. Oh, okay, you made it. <laughs> I apologize. It is summertime. I'm supposed to be nice and you, not yelling. Okay, you want to know why you're yelling? You need baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> Big takeaway today, huh? Go ahead, Devin. I would love to see them deal Beast Stew somewhere. I don't want him here. They are trying to make him a player. He is not cut out to be. Yeah, and again, uh, everything's about role. Like, Beef Stew on a really good team as one of the last guys off the bench to give you some energy, to be physical, to to maybe occasionally take and make a three. I ain't no problem. Signing him to a four-year, $60 million deal was a master class in losing your job. Uh, It's it's insanity. Total insanity. But, look, New Orleans is never going to get out from underneath Brandon Ingram without taking something back. So you could do it. But I, I just, I really don't want to be the team that pays him for it 206. You're right about that because here's why he's 36 million this year, wants an extension, it's a 15% trade kicker. So now you also have to pay him that if you trade for him. I, I can't do that. Okay, David, you win. Please stop yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's summertime. I'll stop. Shout out, Jazzy Cat.